you know, get your degrees, go on to work for companies. But I think um, increasingly entrepreneurship is a very uh, um, valuable, uh, you know, option. And, 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 and it'd be good to hear uh, from the person who has made it in that sphere. So Pratik, on to you. Thank you, Dr. Seth. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. And uh, I think as Dr. said, I would like to have this uh, not much like a research-oriented presentation, but uh, mostly like an entrepreneur's journey, finding out the problem, and if anyone wants to venture later on after your graduation, and not in academia, but like, you know, in startup world, something that I learned myself personally, ups and downs, and then how I utilize technology to do it. So let me share my presentation and uh, please stop me anytime. Like, I just want to make it very informal presentation. Like, think I'm like one of your colleagues because that's how I last uh, left the academia. Uh, that was like my fi uh, final presentation for my dissertation. And then I think that was it for me, like being into the startup world later on. So... Let me know if you can see my presentation. You can, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I can see Taylor nodding head. So uh, what I'm focusing around here is like, uh, like my journey of finding out the problem and uh, how uh, my research or my academic background helped me to kind of find a solution that is something that requires, you know, a large population's problem to be solved in effective manner. And uh, it has been a, like a long journey. It was not like that easy to find the pinpoint the problem and find the solution. So uh, originally I'm from agriculture background. My father is a steel farmer. We owned land in a part of the Gujarat. And uh, I grew up helping him out. Uh, but for my master's, I moved to uh, Ohio Rice University, where Dr. Sates, like a previous research group, was there. And during my PhD, I asked him uh, uh, to kind of, you know, like I was coming from electrical engineering background with sensors and robotics. That was like what I was working in, but always interested in util uh, using sensor data for knowledge discovery. And uh, we had uh, like uh, some folks in Dr. Sates' group working. So join them. And uh, during uh, my time uh, of PhD, I was really interested in entrepreneurship, like building something which actually can be implemented uh, for, uh, you know, like real good. So during the internship, I started uh, building like a startup. That was my first experience. We did a real-time sentiment and analysis using a Twitter stream. This was 2021, 22 era where it was like very early days of even Twitter. And it was a live real-time application, but because being student and uh, not being able to register a company or start, we have we ran it for like till like 40, 50,000 users, but then we have to stop it because there was no way I can actually start and become an entrepreneur being student. Then uh, after that, uh, after graduation, uh, I was a founder or co-founder of this company called Imbue. Uh, we were building uh, smart wearables. So targeted for women, uh, my job was kind of um, bringing intelligent insight, detecting events, fall, and things like that. And this was a pre-Apple Watch era. Uh, we were incubated by one of the incubator in San Francisco. And uh, we were about to acquire by Fossil and the uh, Apple Watch dropped and they kind of completely changed the whole wearable IoT market, whatever happening at that point. Uh, and after that, I was kind of invited by the CTO of this company called Movimento. It's originally Detroit-based com based company, but uh, they were trying to do something over the air updates and data analytics for everything that is not Tesla because Tesla already brought it. So that's where I got into the Movimento. The Movimento got acquired. And, uh, you know, I was like kind of getting satisfied working in a technology for uh you know silicon valley companies at the point because uh i was not getting the satisfaction and at the same time meanwhile like i was seeing my dad uh using still low tech things in india uh and also other farmer like there were so many like farmer suicide cases where you know because of uh not able to sell their crops and there was like so many troubles at the time 2018 19 
period of uh, there was so many things going on so i decided like you know probably it's for, for me uh, to start focusing back on my roots and uh, that's when uh, uh, i started this company called titori so i kind of completely shifted my schedule uh, where i'm here in san francisco bay area with family but uh, stay uh, like waking up in the evening and start building team in india talking to farmers and all and the ultimate goal for me to bring the like ai tools application in the hands of the farmer directly so they can use it for their day to day activity and figure out what is the simplest way to do it uh, so the first thing i saw like you know in us we have zillow where you can actually see the plot level things for the your land and then because you see the land the size you could, and the surrounding area you can do estimation but india at that time the farmland was uh, like those technology was so low or like low tech that if you want to look at the land or, or the shape of your farm you have to go to nearest the government office they will print out a paper because the only way your record of your land for farmers are stored in like a printed paper manner you have to like a create a like a photocopy of it there is uh, no digitization uh, you have to like literally scan copy if you want to upload it and forget about like uh, having a like a geo tagged or geo mapped uh, of this data so uh, i started like i found out that problem to be challenging and also like a really ai oriented you have to use open uh, open sea satellite images and i think this is the time actually we met i met dr sait and i was explaining him like this is the first problem we were trying to solve it was exciting it is still exciting uh but uh, we were not able to find product market fit, fit we were like we went ahead and figure out different ways in india like you know india you have to find like lot of images you have to literally kind of roam around or find context to collect so we kind of collected huge number of like this photocopy scanned it and plotted 1.12 uh, million farmland in the state of gujarat uh, that was like 2019 uh, but that's where the entrepreneurial's journey start that uh, you know you come you're coming from a us background you thinking the farmer will subscribe or they are tech, tech savvy enough to kind of understand settings and understand gis information the technology sounds good and well but uh, it, like you you have to also understand uh, your end user so we figured out that like you know the indian user or the developing nation they are still not ready to digest this type of technology or not ready for actually pay for something very high tech right now because they have very basic problem so we are still keeping our goal same say like hey we still want to bring like a high tech technology in the hands of farmer how do we do it while keeping it simple uh, we need to create some incentive so we started creating this marketplace platform where we give uh, like our incentive was you create your own uh, farmer store and you start like you know you list your things we help you to do direct commerce and meanwhile uh, other tools about your land plotting maybe market data analysis for you to select what price to give like a uh, uh, select when you go for sell uh, those kind of thing we started kind of providing as a back of this uh, marketplace uh, and our goal was let's start bringing them uh, on board so then we can serve the ai tools and during that time we also realized that like even though we gave them incentive there is a big education cost like uh, like education cost in the sense uh, like you teach them how to use an application like and this is not just farmers like mostly like think about developing nation rural population uh, mostly like uh, illiterate or like not you know just basic uh, education for for them to remember all the settings and the steps need to be done to kind of for their day to day life while they are already doing something like a farming or like some hard work construction things like that it's like you are asking too much because we are as a tech folks designing this thing thinking they are also tech savvy and they will figure it out how to use it so that's again the second learning lessons that we had so uh, we thought like okay another problem was like they were not able to sell it unlist it whenever they list on the marketplace they are just you can see over here they will just print out something with the name and price and that's it and it will not it was not a uh, consumer like you know appealing that they will go and buy because on the other option they had something very like a fancy design by 
big corporations or bigger companies selling the same product, but double price, but still the consumer will buy that. So this is the same time the uh, stable diffusion, if you are aware, I'm assuming like most of the technology you guys are aware. So table diffusion was just released. Uh, so we saw opportunity uh, and at that time like GPU and those things were like not that much in demand and things like that. So I ended up buying a few GPUs, uh, building a rig at home and we started mining huge amount of the commodity information because for the marketplace that I show, we already had a lot of uh, commodity data already kind of mined. Uh, we started mining also GPT-3 for a lot of information regarding commodity and started building these images. So when now farmer kind of decide to like sell something, the labels get automatically created. And the second thing after that, you know, we also did something uh, for them to kind of create like a product showcase. This is like a stable diffusion in painting with the LoRa fine tune product uh, images, right? So we when we launch all of this thing, like we are doing it for agriculture in India, but this is also before the photo room app, which is like a highly funded application out there, uh, kind of got launched or then applications uh, like so. We were doing something for agriculture for Indian farmer, but the, in the technology wise, we are like doing for like anywhere in the world. We are first time trying things out because like I'm here, I'm experimenting, I'm hacking things out with the lower stable diffusion, and my application was always working and dating for farmer. So. Uh, we launched this thing uh, called like Cognify. That was just uh, because farmers started using it and then other uh, shopkeepers around, they said like, hey, can we do it for my my other items which are not agriculture? So we end up creating a generic application. But still, at this point, our, uh, our learning was that even though we created and started simplifying all these applications, uh, while you, know, you don't have to know that you're using an AI, a thing is select an option, click, and it will just give you five different good option of the picture you save it, right? But uh, this is like a second learning thing that like, okay, if we can create something very simple where there are like only a couple of buttons there to click, you hide all the hype around AI, the name of the technology and a big thing, but just create like a simple interface where they get things done, then th that is basically what they are looking for. So all this time while we were like working with, uh, we kind of discovered like a really huge problem, which was, which is known for everyone. It is that nobody ever tried to kind of talk about it. And the reason being there is like a huge amount of money to be made when the farmers are, you know, in many developing country, a uh, lot of middlemen and organizations whose job is to kind of, you know, utilize this gap to kind of make profit. And the farmer always stay at the edge. So many things, for example, because there is an illiteracy and language barrier, uh, the farmers are not like, you know, they're not able to find solution for their problem. Either it's a pest, seeds, fertilizer, animal husbandry, finance, or like just basic research. Uh, they have no way to go and access this information. Like, let me tell you how. So think about a, a, a illiterate, uh, farmer uh, who want to look for he's growing some geranium geranium crop uh, who his goal is to kind of sell it to a wholesale buyer who use it for perfume industry something like that and there are like many crop like even like regular wheat and rice there are seed related problem but like if, uh, sticking to this example if the person has to kind of know that what he can do from the agriculture waste from his crop he has no way to find out because I, he cannot just go on a Google and search because this, uh, he first of all, he need to be literate. And then you have to go and read 20 different uh, pages and blogs and have like a different type of knowledge to decide what to do with it. Agriculture Institute in India and many developing countries produce a lot of research. Like they are, they are a really good institute in India too. But they, they create like a PDFs with the like you know like we write papers you guys write one uh, like even today and you know that like if you go to the uh you know regular joe and ask him to read even an abstract they will not understand anything about it so even it's agriculture related research published by institutes uh farmer has nowhere to understand or implement in his day-to-day -day life he's looking for like a simple answer like what fertilizer i should use for cotton crop 
or what pesticide I used to use for a white fly infestation? A simple question, simple geography, uh, and many institutes produce this information too. Uh, then there are like a lot of private advisory. So now farmer have to rely on, let's say, go to apps which are designed to do advisory, but ultimately they are like a bias services to give them, you know, targeted product sell. So there is no, like it's an advisory hidden to sell something. And then there are government call centers, but government call centers are like, you know, limited 10 to 5. The person talking you are talking to is not educated enough. He has like some limited number of knowledge and there are like um, hours of uh, waiting, they have to wait, uh, like, you know, stay on the phone call to find an answer. Now, because of all of that, what the farmer end up doing, not just like India, like Africa, like Southeast Asia, they go to this uh, village expert on the corner who knows just a little more than them, but kind of have all his uh, kind of biases. He has a uh, some incentive to sell some of the things that he has been carrying. Either he's a shopkeeper, but this is like the same guy, uh, same uh, village person. And that is where the whole, all the problems for the farmers start because they are getting a knowledge or information which is not trustworthy, not kind of produced by the Agriculture Institute or not going to help them out. And most of the time, that's the reason for failure, failed crop and all the problems they are facing. And we also saw that's not a, like one like one sided problem. Uh, the farmers have literacy, language barrier, and fragmented ecosystem problem. But on the institute that produce knowledge, they produce a lot of material. They have package of practices for farmers. So package of practices are basically just instruction, like you know, just a manual for farmer to follow for one crop. They they have like some products, uh, material insights, and they have like a different channels to distribute. And that's like, there is a no kind of coordination between the data that is being produced. The format of data it produces like, uh, like I haven't kind of co covered a picture here, but like, you know, I can talk about the examples. So someone will create a, a booklet uh, in the local language. And just for sake of uh, uploading, they will take a pictures. The pictures will not be even like a done, like you know, process with OCR. Just a picture combined together in a PDF, and place on internet, which is like not even kind of crawl. With so this uh, Jan AI uh, LLMs we talked about today cannot even crawl those information to get you know make it part of the the knowledge base that they have. So those informations are very difficult to get. And they are important too, but there is no incentive for this knowledge producing uh, institute to make it available. Their job is to do research, not to reach out to the farmer. So the knowledge gap persists because of all this thing. So the solution we come up with say, hey, we have been collecting a lot of knowledge base already for different commodities and all. Uh, Jan AI LLMs are getting cheaper. And uh, I think you guys are already aware of this uh, retrieval augmentation paper that was published in 2020. So what we did first was uh, to create from the, our knowledge base, a RAG based system where uh, like, you know, from the, the, the knowledge base that we have, the experience that we had working with the chunks and embeddings and also the vector, word to vector and all this thing is like not new. It does, uh, it just that like, it was not that like easily usable at the time, but we built a system where uh, if this was early, all this Langchain and Lama index and all the tools that has been like out there right now that use this knowledge base that we have collected, connect LLM with it. And on the other side, from the farmer side, uh, use um, different uh, speech and translation models and create like a seamless quick system where whatever they can ask, uh, they can even uh, ask by voice in their language. We do retrieval from the knowledge, create the answer and return it back. And that's where the, the Kisan AI was born. Uh, earlier for us, it was like, okay, we have knowledge base and we are solving a big problem. We were not looking into that, like this is gonna blow up, blow up in the sense, uh, the farmer's gonna love it so much that we're gonna generate, like we have to put everything we were working on side and only focus on this, which is now we are doing. Because throughout finding a solution for the problems, uh, we figure out like the base way to deliver this thing. And all, it looks like, all the technology also kind of came together to, to help us out where the LLM price went down, the knowledge base uh, we were curating and building were able to serve. 
there was a demand and a hype about using generative ai so many institutes around also started picking up and kind of publishing started doing pilots and then we also figured out because this is a knowledge uh, the ai doesn't care about which vertical it is if you have a knowledge base a curated knowledge base from this you can solve any vertical any vertical in the sense i'm care i care about agriculture and adjacent domains so right now in the fragmented ecosystem if there is a seed company or seed vertical then everybody talk about only seed like they don't go and jump into the world fertilizer but for us we can actually now go across all the verticals and the things that affect a farmer so we ultimately become like kisans uh, or at least we want to become at one point uh, farmers like the first companion where if they have any problem related to agriculture whether it is related to agriculture input or uh, once the crop is ready how to sell where to sell find the market data or uh, even with the finance loans all the information and this thing actually uh, we are actually getting from the farmer so uh, this is the simple and intuitive interface uh, if you can also access go to kisania or download android app testing out if you are uh, someone who use indic language or no spanish or the we have support for mostly the knowledge is coming from india and if you look at the application interface there is just a one button the button is to ask ai in conversation now this was launched in the march 2023 so this was six months before uh google bard kind of kind of launched this feature and open ai recently like a month or two months back launch feature when you can start a conversation so we were actually uh i can probably say like we were like first to actually bring end to end voice based conversation before all this big company uh, we are like a simple bootstrap company for i mean san francisco my team is in like uh, the same home uh, hometown that i'm from in surat and when we launched we got like a really good response uh, because it was like a first of a kind someone actually demonstrating that like jani ai with the voice can be used for a whole demography where they do not have to uh read anything or write anything because the answer that we are generating we are also playing in the same language so now it's a conversation happening uh and then the final thing was uh, like you know everybody like to give advice but there should be action associated and that is our learning too that if you just give advice then farmer prob or the everyone will kind of move away because uh, you know it's like a google as a search engine but amazon is like very like you know this is something combining Where you search, you get an answer, and then a supported product will kind of start showing up from trusted partners. So we can actually complete the loop. So this is our goal. We are not completely there as a startup to kind of start putting things up, but that's like a problem for later. I just want to make sure how am I with the time. Okay, I do hurry up. So, uh, so in terms of the platform. uh we figure out like okay we have a kisan ai platform for the farmers we going to grow it we going to start with india probably for around the, all the developing nation want to become like a one unified first companion that's our startup or company goal that's we are how we are moving in and uh, for that we think, start, yes uh, uh we uh, i have uh, you know a whole bunch of uh, people in the audience they are also interested in uh, some technical details in the sense yes. of have you uh, acquired and curated the data and uh, did the training yeah so so i'll just move on to that part then basically uh, i was going for more problem so so data so data acquisition part uh, for there were like a two thing the first thing we started with the knowledge curation that i was talking about in the the map map one right so our, our like our uh, like the way we are actually collecting data we have collaborated with university so where we were actually started getting first of all the uh, the data that we are collecting and then uh, the many places this uh, kvk is which is called kisan vigyan kendra these are the like a uh, extension of a different institute in india from state and federal which actually go and help the farmers and they have like uh, some printed out materials so we actually started collecting then working on ocr and then translation model so this is like uh, and these are all structured and structured data and this is what we started actually collecting translating it and building the data set now uh, for for the first right now before we went to the model that like you know we we did launch last month we were running a rag based system basically and for the rag based system the chunking methodology was very important for us 
because uh, uh, like something that we learned that if you if you just directly put a, a pdf in the rack system uh, there's a lot of uh, metadata that was getting lost so the, even the hallucination was like a really high because most of the chunks are not uh, not like you know not uh, maintaining a lot of content inside it you so, might want to define the term like rag rag okay i thought uh, Okay, I don't like yeah. So this is a general computer science. Uh, oh, okay, okay. All right. So uh, RAG is basically retrieval augment uh, augmentation generation. This was a paper published in 2020, and what basically you do in that one is first of all, okay, I think it's a real good thing. If I were. so in RAG, uh, all the whatever knowledge base you have, you create chunk and you create like vector embeddings. And the vector embeddings are basically like vectorized version of the knowledge that you have. And uh, then how do you do RAG? Uh, next time when a question came to your system, the question also get converted into a vector. And then uh, using a library called files or some other like vector uh, semantic search tools, which so we are using semantic search from the, one of the library and also the files uh, library that you match vector to vector. So from your vector library, where our knowledge, let's say we have around 10,000 to 15,000 document from different institute, we created vector out of them. And now whenever question come from a, a farmer, we do, we take, uh, convert that into the vector. And uh, for, if one, anyone interested, we were using uh, uh, OpenAI's ADA, uh, the uh, embedding uh, uh, model before, then we started using a sentence transformer from Hugging Face. And these are the different model which can actually, you can convert your uh, textual context into the vectors. So now you have a vector coming from question. You match it inside your uh, knowledge base. Let's say this is a knowledge base that we have created. And your RAG system will return all the vectors from your knowledge base that matches. Right. So then you select top three or four contexts, basically from this knowledge base, like the embed vectors that are returning that vector you feed back to the LLM that like, okay, these are the vectors and the context that has returned from this matching question answer. So uh, like for an example, farmer is asking a question regarding uh, uh, a cotton pest. And now we have from 10,000 document, there were uh, like every document had like 50 chunks. So they're like 500,000 different embedding chunks. And then some of them have exactly matching about cotton and white fly, like, you know, uh, vector matching. So we got, we got 10 or 15 uh, uh, vectors like uh, written from the semantic search matching. And then we select like, top three or four, which has like the highest score. Now that means like, you know, your knowledge base has written some information regarding the cotton crop and white fly. Now that you try kind of provide it back to the LLM, the LLM then use and combine this text with the question context and uh, the whatever additional guardrail that you have provided and generate the answer. And this whole things happen within like less than two seconds because in our uh, system right now, we are returning everything six to seven seconds and uh, our three to four seconds are mostly with that uh, ASR, like automatic speech recognition, uh, then translating into English because our knowledge base has been converted everything into the English because LLMs are mostly have 98, 99% knowledge in English. So we decided like we do not want to do like Indic language search inside LLM. And there are like another technical thing that you I think know that like uh, in LLM right now, most of the training material because it's used in English. If you use the other language token, they are expensive. Mostly Indic language tokens are five to seven, five to six times expensive to be used and like to get inference. So this whole RAG process, which is something very important, if you are actually uh, looking into, I would say like you know try out some libraries, which is which is going to be very important going forward for like next many years, because uh, this is better than LLM. It reduces hallucination significantly. Because like you are asking LLM to stay into the context that you have provided from the vector that you have searched from your knowledge base, you are not going outside of that realm, right? So this will significantly help you uh, uh, with the reduction of hallucination. Now coming back to 
so now from this whole system uh, we have we ran this thing for eight months like we've been running this for eight months and we have collected more than uh, 300,000 conversation now my goal was at this point was to uh, reduce this whole rag system and see if I can embed some of the knowledge inside the model itself because any day uh, maintaining rag uh, uh, has two or three second latency and it also added add some uh, additional cost and if I'm developing something for agriculture, uh, like, uh, you know, the low or uh, like uh, farmers who are looking for something very cheap, I have to reduce as many component of my, this architecture as possible and keep, maybe just maintain the LLM and reduce everything else. Like a knowledge base go directly to LLM. So I remove everything out and just directly can LLM be powerful. And that is right now my ultimate goal is for developing Denu. So like we like just like we have llama orca uh like denu is a kind of name of a cow uh, like the uh from indian hindu mythology it's a name of a, like a mythic cow so i think not go a lot in that one but for us the the problem was we wanted to remove the rag system latency cost and also want to create a proprietary model so all the conversation that we collected uh around 300,000. So there is another thing, right? Uh, that like when you uh, collect conversation, many times you have to go through a lot of data curation process because all the conversation that you collect or even the knowledge base you, you collect, it's like garbage in, garbage out. If you actually use that to train your model, then there's a possibility that uh, your model will have like, you know, uh, uh, answers coming out, which are like not really accurate in terms of uh, carrying fact. Like if you're asking what different type of varieties of seeds that I can use for wheat, and if you are actually not curating that process uh, data very well, then it will generate a lot of, uh, uh, it will hallucinate a lot and create a variety that is not even there out there. So what we started doing from the conversation that we had, we created a and curated instruction set. So these are actual conversation that is that are recorded on our system with the rags. Because with the rag, we have no factual information in our conversation. So it's not just like a LLM, LLM is like very pure synthetic data. It's a kind of semi-synthetic data where you have a reference of from the context of the rag. And those kind of 300,000, uh, we have like more than 300,000 conversation. And uh, with our team, we actually went through the steps and like uh, remove a lot of them, uh, in the, like, you know, filter it out, added like more annotations and labels. And that's around 20 million tokens of data set that we have. Uh, we did like a, a full fine tuning using on the open Hathi. We wanted to do earlier on the Mistral 7B model. That's one of the model being released by French company Mistral. And it, when we were working on it, it has like a, a really good score compared to everything. But at the same time, uh, we found out like we're uh, working with the uh, Servum AI, which is AI for Bharat spin-off, who are working on bilingual models. And they were working on something which is a uh, bilingual Hindi and English, where the token token length for uh, Hindi was significantly uh, uh, reduced because of they kind of rewrote the tokenizer for the model. Uh, so we ended up basically training our data set on the open Hathi. And because of that, now uh, what the heart, the Denu model has is the capability where you can actually ask in Hindi, it will return question answer in Hindi, which is we are like same as the English answer, but the token length is reduced from six X to one X. And uh, right now what we are doing in terms of uh, the model that we created, we are testing out uh, uh, with the like, human evaluation because uh, many of the evaluation out there are designed for like a general purpose model, uh, like MMLU and all, where there, there are some uh, domain specific knowledge, but we do not have anything for the knowledge that we have, like very specific Indian agriculture and practices for different geography where uh, different advice will be there for like a, for a paddy crop. There'll be different advice for Kerala, like one state in South versus one state in North. So their geography is very important too. So we've been working right now with the kind of creating the evaluation taste for this particular vertical. And then 
more data we collect, we're gonna keep improving it. Our goal is to have uh, rag rag used to create more conversation so we can keep embedding knowledge. Now, I think from the research perspective, uh, there are many cases where uh, we have many discussion research happening where is it uh, uh, SFT or even a LoRa are capable enough. LoRa is a low, uh, low rank training basically. Uh, low rank adaptive training, LoRa. It's a one way way of uh, training the large language models, which is like a quicker and cheaper, which only focus on some uh, some weights. And parameters and not the entire model. And SFT is a, a full file tuning, uh, supervised file tuning, and that one is better than LoRa. But LoRa is much cheaper. So if you are working with a larger model, uh, you can use the LoRa training too. So uh, where I'm going with that is uh, right now the debates and the research topic which is going on. Can you actually embed additional knowledge after the model has been trained completely, and then you use LoRa or SFT on top of it? Can you embed knowledge? And that is something which we are trying to do and trying to prove. We are saying uh, that like uh, the any or any training after the completion of the training is still a training, and you are uh, trying to add weight. So, but the thing is like we are not publishing any material right now because we are like busy with the customer and all. But something on your side, if you wanna uh, pick up, uh, I can provide some material or not, uh, like some of the research that has been published recently where uh, if you are actually looking into kind of working on a project for the social good where you know you want to reduce the cost of end-to-end -end solution then you want to make sure that any as many component in between your uh, product that you want to remove so it be, the cost become like uh, you know less burden on the end user that is farmer and uh, you can also meanwhile scale it so this is right now happening with our model and we are right now like very early, but by the way, when we launched this one, there was like one, one of the first kind of vertical experiment done with it. So right now myself being humble, I'm not trying to claim anything that it has been successfully done, but recently Microsoft also research, uh, released a uh, similar paper in agriculture and uh, the, there were some uh, embeddings of new knowledge with the training. And hopefully, you know, right now we use 300K thousand, uh, 300K instruction set, but we do have, this is like five to 7% of the total knowledge that we have. So hopefully like, you know, later versions, we may be able to actually embed more knowledge and reduce reliability on the RAG system that I, dis I was discussing earlier. So, uh, and I, that's, uh, and I think the next, the technical part, there is another thing I can talk about is, uh, I, I, I do not have slide, but there is another thing in LLM called text to SQL. So text to SQL is something where actually uh, when uh, you get a query, uh, like when you query uh, about some analytics, uh, as though, so there are as text to SQL models, which will actually convert your, uh, like a human contextual query into SQL string, which then you can run on your database itself. So, the, you know, right now for LLM, you are dealing with the like uh, knowledge that has been already embedded, but there are many applications uh, that require like dealing with the real time data. And so the reason we are working with this, so there are uh, like uh, farmers in India, they do not have like a real time information about what is going on in the market where they want to go and sell their produce. So right now the case is they produce is produce something then they have to find out the market which is mostly the nearest one where they go and sell something and they do not have control over what price to select or what market to go because they do not have knowledge of the what's going on with that thing and there are many places where this knowledge and the data has been real time being collected same thing with the weather there's a lot of weather data going on but the farmer is bombarded with like a graph and charts instead of like a higher level abstraction or the comprehension so what we are trying to do with this market data analysis uh, uh, LLM integration that we have collected, we are collecting real-time information from the market. We will use this text to SQL uh, uh, like feature of LLM where it will automatically generate SQL query for to query the database itself. And because of that, now the farmer can actually do the direct analytics by voice. Like they can ask, 
what which which is the best month for uh, the grape prices for the market which like you know they can do analytics like they can compare which uh, which market can give me more price which month is the best what is the average and this can be enabled just by talking to the llm because llm will create like a whatever complex query need to be done uh, there may be like a some fine tuning we'll have to do so for the sql to uh, text db uh, the model but that will enable us to start talking to real time data and that will basically deliver more goods to the farmer and i think the second thing is the multi modal so that is another few things which is happening right now that uh, image uh, there are model that you can search called lava ll llava and that's where you can actually not just text you can use images to kind of uh, train llama 2 on top and directly start talking to uh, the model itself. I think you, uh, OpenAI already doing this with GPT-4. They have GPT-4 visual API. So that's a similar model, open source model that's out there. And we are right now collecting uh, data. We are we haven't trained ourselves, but our goal is to kind of take the Denu model, uh, train it with the textual context and knowledge base, and also all the diseases and the pests images that we can collect or mine from around use the same model to train with also the images so now a farmer can not just ask a question he can just you can like take a picture of it and then ask question with it say like hey what kind of pest is this what should i do so we identify the pest we say that this is the solution this is the nearest thing you can go and buy so that's right now we are at the no, the technical level for the next step for us to kind of go from what we have done to next ad feature. But we also, as a being a startup, we also figure out a lot more on the, the revenue model side. So these are the good research topic if uh, somebody kind of interested uh, and, you know, kind of join hand or help us out. We were really interesting. Uh, but other than that, I think this is where we are, right? And uh, I think... Let's so, uh, so Pradeek, uh, I have yes. just a uh, um, uh, question that may or may not be possible to answer. Uh, you know, um, uh, uh, there is a lot of interest in moving from uh, wheat and rice to uh, this bajra and jowar and that kind of uh, crop, right? Correct. Um, what, uh, what do you see as uh, the need uh, for technology before you can... Um, advice, uh, you can probably answer some basic questions uh, about growing um, uh, a different crop at, uh, you know, for that farmer. But mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, let's say, crop transitioning or selection, what, what you know, is that something you want to go and, and if so, how you might go there? Okay, yes, I think we, we are working on this one, Dr. So what, what we are right now, we are not collecting individual human, uh, like individual farmer context. But there are so many patterns with the crop rotation that has been already published in the terms of knowledge because mm. of you have to maintain the poor, like a poor nitrogen amount inside the soil or some other. In, uh, so there is like a crop rotation patterns that has been published already. Uh, but because we are not collecting every each and individual farmer's history right now. So this is my personal plan. And I think I can be like just technically what, what we are actually implementing is. So there is a thing called, uh, uh, like what you can do is maintain running context. So the, the, one way that all the search engine and uh, meta has been doing until now, where they collect everything that you have kind of gone through, all the search that you have done and the textual answer that has been generated. But if you really want to use pure LLM to do that, that you cannot keep increasing the context window because LLMs are limited with the context window. And so what we are going to do is, uh, uh, once we start collecting farmers questions, we will be like uh, offline running from all the information that we have created, like collected and run a, like a fact, uh, fact uh, prompt, which will kind of keep maintaining a farmer's profile that will be kind of added as additional context to the question. So for example, uh, uh, like this happens where and this is something UNDP's project actually too. UNDP are doing with something different. But uh, there are additional contexts, for example, what farmers, like uh, the farmer, like they have satellite data for some kind of oxygen, uh, like I forgot what, but uh, some nutrition goes down and this uh, UN uh, have some sensors which are collecting them. 
So that additional context that we provide back inside the answer from the answer, like the context that you have retrieved from the knowledge base. So what end up happening if farmer asked that should I grow sugar cane right now? What kind of variety of sugar cane I need to grow? Or let's say they, they talk about bajra, as you said, or mallet. So they say, can I grow mallet? Now, if we have the history that like in the Kharif season or the Ravi season, or like in last summer, this three crop that you have taken, that context added with the, the pattern that would be like a kind of pass to the LLM itself. So this question answer would be also depending upon the previous context and which can actually help farmer to say like, hey, you have been growing sugarcane for last three season. So mallet will help you or not help you to kind of, you know, uh, put the new nitrogen back in your soil. So this is possible. And this is something, you know, would be really helpful for farmer too, because that will actually kind of go above and beyond like just providing like a simple answer or like a straightforward like because right now the questions are the current problem it's not taking care of the historic context but this is possible where we can actually save the running context window for the farmer and then provide answer based on that questions from the audience I'm sorry, there's a lot of agriculture in this one. So, no, that's fine. Uh, there's, there's no issue. I think there's several questions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Okay, let me see. Okay, yes, Pandey has a question I can answer. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so this is what is happening. Yes. Uh, so when we were actually curating this knowledge base for Denu, uh, there were like a question for Paddy, the coconut, like coming for, let's say, Kerala. And we all said the location for all of them. Now, there are a lot of repeated questions that happens for different district of Kerala, let's say. And the same Paddy question will also come back from Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh, like other state of India. So what we were doing when we were actually creating the instruction set from this one, we were embedding, we were trying to embed the, the state and the location in that one. So uh, what we are seeing is that like it is actually kind of some level on uh, the crop level, the state knowledge is getting embedded. We still do not have very much uh, located at the, the district level, but because every state has, let's say 10, 15,000 query out of that, most of the larger crops has the like a 60, 70% coverage. So if paddy and coconut related question being asked, or the wheat related question, then the geographical knowledge is being embedded in that one. So it's part of the knowledge set that we curated for training of Deno. Uh, you, can you see the other questions? Yeah. Okay. So people, we pulls asking, what is yeah. the long term vision for Kisan AI? So I think I mentioned, I think earlier when I was talking more about the problem statement, the what we want to become is like the first companion for farmer. So something where uh, any problem that farmer has, doesn't matter, is it a seed, pesticide, fertilizer, finance, animal husbandry, we would be like, we would like to be the first companion in their hand, a trusted companion. They open our app, ask, start talking. We provide them all the information, also where to buy, what to buy, services to get. So it's like a one end thing for a farmer. That's what we want to become all around the world. Just starting with India and then go to other developing nation. Uh, then a Simran. Uh, hello. Hi. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so like, is, I saw that your goal was to become a farmer's best friend or something like that. But uh, what I wanted to know was like, is the data that you're providing uh, to your AI, is it uh, unobtainable uh, by other uh, sources, by other competitors of yours? 
Hmm. And that's a very entrepreneurial question. So no, the the data that we are using is public data. It's just that someone has to go collect the OCR and uh, do data curation, remove the lot of you know unnecessary thing, duplicates and things like that. So that is the that is the huge process that like you know just how OpenAI has been has been like really good at coming out with the model that are better than anyone else because they had like a four year or five year head start in data curation and they also figure out the proper way. So my personal thesis has been that the, the whatever data that you collect, you can collect just like all the PDF around that. But if it's not processed very well, then the models are not going to be that great. So there is a literally, if you end up spending 10, 50, 20 million dollars and say like, I'm going to have like an army of people to catch up with these guys uh, to curate the data, then definitely that they can. Uh, uh, because right now we are working on the public data. Okay, thank you. So, how can you make the input collection part more intelligent to draw more context to provide the more optimum solution considering the similarity of various symptoms? These are the also data. Input collection part more intelligent. So, uh, Psych, I don't understand the question very well. If you can talk about it. Yeah, uh, hi, sir. So what I wanted to ask is, uh, in most cases, because the uh, primary mode over here is the farmer has to speak out the problem, right? Correct. So from my experiences, I've seen that farmers don't actually know what the problem is. Like if I take a simple symptom in a rice crop, which is browning of leaf, right? hmm. there might be many reasons to the browning of leaf, but... Uh, visually, farmer can only see that the leaf has become brown and that's what he's going to describe uh, on his application, right? So mm -hmm. how do we uh, provide, uh, give, get a solution to making the context, you know, more and more so that, uh, you know, maybe the farmer types out earlier, okay, I, I am in this region with this moisture and all that. But again, we're relying on a lot of uh, factors where the farmer still has to give a lot of context. So how can we make this process more efficient or intelligent? Yeah. So see like in terms of solving the problem there are like a multiple stage of it uh so what what you are talking about where we have to consider like all the aspect of like weather moisture the history of the farmer itself or the trend what's going on in that particular area at that time so hopefully when we actually start collecting more information from the farmer start personalizing it uh, we will have the location to find out what's going on in terms of humidity the late environment was the last rain and all we can maybe start adding more context to give them an option they're like hey this is the solution but that can be one two three four five different things that you want to check it out so that would be the ultimate goal and we would like to go right now uh, we want to solve one problem which is like even though you know like uh, you are looking at uh, solving a simple problem where the knowledge that we are trying to provide is there but not kind of you know available to them so if we can become uh trusted like companion for them uh like a good story i can tell you i think that would be that can bring more context so we had this scene in a maharashtra like a, some isolated not maharashtra Chhattisgarh, isolated corner of Chhattisgarh farmer they have a different dialect for describing pest and uh, that's like in aphids are called mawa in marathi in some area and uh, mawa in indian like uh, other indian languages also mean like uh, a sweet from milk sweet or mawa or some kind of tobacco they chew in the multiple meaning so what how he the farmer described to me is that i asked it the it couldn't understand the dialect so then the farmer went around and asked more question describing the aphid to get the aphid's name and then asked the question again so what is end up happen end up happening is like maybe you cannot help all the farmers who just want to ask one question and then expect but many uh, venues are opening up because of AI that now they can go around and ask as many questions to go to the depth of it, right? So the farmer, if he can do proper education, then right now, instead of asking a simple question about my leaves are curling, he will go and say, hey, my leaves are curling, the soil is wet, uh, this is happening, that is happening, it's summer, it's sunny, whatever. But that whole question, if they more education and if they start using more, they will figure out how they can exploit or utilize AI more for their, like, you know, their benefit. And that's where we are going, where we are seeing this example where farmers are going around because 
earlier there was like a all infrared complex in terms of going on a call or asking someone and feeling bad that hey you're farmer but you don't know how to do this thing so they were not asking question ai they don't have to worry about it so they can just call we are seeing where people are talking in middle of the night while they are they are uh, watering the field you can hear the cricket behind that like they now it's like enable for them to anytime call a ai and ask question so hopefully we will reach that point where they become more familiar Okay, great i think we uh, need to uh, close the session uh, thank you very very much pratik um, uh, you know it was uh, refreshing and we got a very different perspective and especially the entrepreneur perspective was um, all the more unique uh, for us so once again thank you very much uh, uh, you and i have other uh, things to talk about we'll, we'll do so offline bye bye okay, okay thank you yeah.